video on the topic plants and the roots. This video was specially requested by one of my subscribers and for that I'm thankful because now I can make a video to help explain a topic that someone could not understand. So to start off, an overview of plants. So this is an example of a plant and this might be what most people think of when the term plant comes to their mind. However, plants are extremely important. This is because in the food chain, they are the first line of things that animals eat. Plants are producers, meaning they take things that no one else can use and they make stuff that animals can eat. For example, they take carbon and make it into oxygen, which is how they breathe. It's kind of the opposite of us humans. They also take sunlight, water, and nutrients from the soil. They then combine these into a food they can eat and the byproduct is fruits and other stuff that animals can eat. Plants are extremely important. They've been called the lungs of the earth. And another important fact is that they aren't part of the animal kingdom that we're part of. They have their own kingdom of species called the plant kingdom. So now, an overview of a plant's parts. So a plant has four to five main parts. It has the roots, it so in this picture, has the roots, leaves, fruits and flowers, which don't apply to all plants, but they apply to some. And most plants have a stem. So roots. Roots are important because for three reasons. One, they store food. Another, they get nutrients from the soil that the plant will use later or now. And they also help to keep the plant anchored into the soil. Now, if there were no roots, and the plant had some other way of getting the nutrients it needed, then if, if there happened to be a strong wind that just even touched the plant, it would just go flying into the air like a little fan. The stem. The stem serves as a support system for the plant. It kind of works like the human spine. It works as a way that food can go up to down or down to up, and it also keeps the plant standing upright. Now, flowers are used to attract pollinators that allow the plant to reproduce. Fruits are the byproduct of the pollination and inside them they contain seeds to make more plants. Leaves are arguably the most important part of the plant as they are the ones that have the chloroplasts. Those parts are what give the plant a green color and they're filled with tiny little things called chlorophyll which do use a process called photosynthesis to make food out of air, sunlight, and the occasional water that has the leaf. Now, after this, I'm gonna go into more detailed description of each part. To start off, what are the roots? You can see this picture. You have a little plant above and a branching root system down below. These roots are important for the three reasons I mentioned earlier. There are certain nutrients such as nitrogen that are available in the soil, but not that much in the air. And plants can use this Plants use these to stay alive. The roots, in turn, get these and store them for when the plant needs them. They also keep the plant anchored to the soil, and they also happen to soak up any water that happens to be in the ground. Now, the roots are important for those three reasons. There are many different types of roots as well. You have the normal classic roots that everyone thinks of. Then you also have aerial roots. These occur for plants such as mangroves that they basically, they have like roots that stick up out of the ground. Like just imagine, you have a normal plant and the soil suddenly gets a lot shallower so that some of the roots just stick up. Now those are called aerial roots. There are also watery roots where the plant is suspended above water. The roots go into the water and they help get air pockets for animals that live in them and they also get the water and other certain nutrients from the water. <laughs> now, for the next one, what is a stem? The stem is another important part of the plant like I mentioned earlier. You can see in this picture, you have, you have the stem and the root is connected from the bottom, the flowers are usually connected up top, and the leaves are connected to the rest of it. Now, the stem you can think of as the human body's spinal system. It, now the spine, it keeps us upright and the skeleton system of our body prevents us from being a pile of mush on the ground. The plant stem does the same thing. If it wasn't there, 
then it will just be a big pile of mush on the ground with the occasional leaves and flowers and roots down below. Now, the step also has a very advanced part inside of it, which it's kind of an elevator system that relies on suction to put get food up and gravity to get food down. This is why stems are really important. Now, the next part of the plant is the leaves. The leaves of the plant are filled with chloroplasts. That's, give, that's what give them their green color. Inside the chloroplasts, there's a chlorophyll. The chlorophyll are millions and millions of tiny little cells that do photosynthesis. This is what makes them classified as a producer and also why plants are extremely unique and important for the diversity of life on Earth. So whenever someone thinks of leaves, they, normal th they normally think of little ovals that are green in color. Now this can be true, but there are also many other kinds of leaves. The leaves have certain, have certain holes in them, microscopic holes, you can't see them with a the naked eye. They're called stomata. They have basically a robot system programmed into their mind that every, every certain amount of time they open, they have a suction system that pulls air in, then they close. And then when the air runs out and the photosynthesis is done, they open again and then more air comes in. This is like a sensory system. And this is why plants can also be considered miniature robots, if you think about it. Now, the process of food is called photosynthesis, like I mentioned. And the, part, the thing I mentioned earlier about having a robot system and moving up and down, you can also think about it as a clock. Now, you have an alarm clock that's set to ring at a certain time. Now, plants also have an alarm that sets them to open at a certain time. And this is why they're very smart. Um, the next part, what exactly are flowers and fruits? So you can see this picture. You have these two little bulges that are fruits, and you have the red parts that are flowers. Now, flowers have a few purposes. They keep animals such as bees alive because bees are pollinators. They need the pollen that they find inside the plant's flower to survive. And plants also rely on pollinators like bees to transfer the pollen from one plant to the other. This in turn starts off their reproductive system and then they can make fruits which inside them have seeds. Um, fruits are also important to other animals because for some animals they include everything that the animal eats. For others, they include some of what the animal eats. This applies to, to humans because humans can eat things like meat, but they, can also, they also eat fruits and vegetables which are the byproduct of plants and their reproductive cycle. Now, plants, their plant reproductive system is very complex, but most of it includes a male part called the stomach and a female part called the pistil. The pistil generates the pollen, and when one bee with the pollen lands on another flower, it automatically goes into the stomach of the plant, which is the male part, and this starts the reproductive cycle, and which makes the fruits. Now flowers and fruits are different from other plants because they don't apply to all plants. Some plants have different methods of reproduction, including spores. Spores and also things like acorns. Spores, but like I mentioned before, are just very light things that just fly in the air with, a, with any strong wind. And whenever the wind stops, they fall and go into the ground. If the conditions are right, it becomes a new plant. And if the conditions are right for a long amount of time, then ultimately it becomes a new tree. So, the next part, the most interesting part, the plant fun facts. Now, there's certain plants like this one you see here. This is the monkey orchid. If you look closely, you won't see an orchid, but rather you'll see the face of a monkey. These type of plants are really interesting because this plant, for example, prevents from being eaten by the, it prevents the flower and the orchid from being eaten by making it look like the face of a monkey. Even if it's a very small face, some predators would like to run away because monkeys hunt and kill those animals. So this is a way for the plant to survive. Now, there are also other plants, such as the Titus ara, which is the world's largest flower. It can be up to seven feet in width and length, but it, it is smelling like something you'd never believe. If you go up to a flower that big, You'd most likely expect a fragrance, a good smell, 
also that big. But when you come even far away from the Titus Ar from the Titan Aro, you will smell the stench of rotting meat. Now this will deter some pollinators, but it will also attract others, such as flies. You might not know it, but flies also qualify as pollinators, which is probably their only one good useful trait. <laughs> and um, this plant attracts it, and therefore can be used to um, pollinate and spread far, far. Another fun fact, think about the baobab tree found in Africa. This can be one of the largest trees in the world. And m get ready to have your mind blown. The trunk of the baobab tree can hold up to 120,000 liters of water in just its trunk. That is a lot of water. And that is enough to enable the baobab tree to survive for many, many years in its desert habitat. Another fun fact, in the 1600s, tulips in Holland were so valuable that certain rare bulbs were worth more than their weight in gold. People from all around the world flocked to buy these, and as a result, the economy of the Dutch, it literally just collapsed because so many people were spending money on flowers that weren't really worth their value, they were just pretty, that their entire economy just collapsed. And they went into a recession that they didn't come out of for a very long time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you did, then remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.